Today, we're gonna to be getting React into our Webflow project. So if you're excited about that, then uh, stick around. So we see a lot of requests trying to get React in our Webflow projects and asking if it's possible or, you know, how can we do this? We cannot get like React as it's intended to be used directly in our Webflow projects. I think I've come up with an interesting way of how we can get React into our Webflow projects and be able to design our React components within, um, within Webflow. So the way I envision using React in something like Webflow is actually pre-creating your components, right? So what I've done in my style guide, I've created a simple component here. So there's my happy medium that I feel like we can use React, but also use Webflow and combine the two. First thing we need to do is to create an area in which to render our React component, right? So I'm gonna create a div block here. And what you commonly do is add an, a div block with an ID of something like app. We need to go into custom code and actually load in React. So I'm just gonna do it here just for simplicity's sake. Uh, and we can load it at the end of the body if we should. And what you want is the minified version. So now that we've got the React libraries into our project, we want to add a third one called Babel or Babel. Now we get on to actually writing our code. So the first thing we of course need to do is add our JavaScript script uh, tags. So we want Babel to take over um, this, this text block. So what we can do is go text Babel. The first thing we need to do is load React DOM and it has a render method that we need to call. The first argument that this takes is simply a React component that we want to load into our area. So we're going to start with a class and we're going to name this app. And what React does, it calls a render method on this component. So we need to create that render method. So we need to return some JSX or HTML. And what we're simply going to do is go hello React and return that. And there's our first React component. So we need to pass that in as the first method. The second thing we want to pass this function is the actual element we want to load this component into. So if we do document get element by ID and pass it app. Apologies, I missed off the parentheses there for the function. And we should see some re React loading. Now we wanna create a, what they call a functional component um, that will contain the HTML for our card. So if we create a function here and name it card, then we need to then return from that function some JSX. If you go to your style guide page, We've got our component here that we want to create. If we inspect the element, right click, edit as HTML, and then we have all of this HTML that we can then copy and paste into our dumb component. Clean it up a little bit. Now we can see we've got a nice clean component. Change that to class name. Define that we want it to receive what they call as props. And then we can start to use these props within our component. So now this component is set up to receive props. They look just like HTML attributes. We say header, image, which is also going to be a string, paragraph, my special wombat. Their name is uh, John. Image, we can pass that in. Then we can see that John the wombat is displaying. This episode was taken from a longer, more in-depth explanation of the subject matter. So if you're interested to learn more, then I suggest you click the link up in the card. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. And until next time, happy no coding.